Being a professor for 15 years was a blast, and these are the most important lessons I learned. To maintain momentum for my life story, I dropped the cap and gown for the next chapter. Hey everybody, Dr. Z here, and welcome to the inaugural episode of Professor Lessons, Turning Ideas into Action. And the intro that you saw and the title of this whole series really says it all. I was lucky enough to spend 15 years teaching in higher education at the college level and was fortunate enough to teach at five different universities from community college all the way through research one institutions like Texas A&M, both public and private as well. So I taught a lot of different types of students and at the same time I've been growing a consulting business for the last 10 years. So I got to interact and communicate with people who are beginning their professional journeys and trying to build a skill set, along with people who've already honed their skill set and are continuing to climb in their professional journeys. And I was able to learn so much. And even though I'm not a professor anymore, I, I need to share these lessons. And that's where this little session comes from. So hopefully I'm able to share some things that you're able to find useful in your personal or professional lives. And let's just dive right into it. In this first episode, you're going to learn about why complexity is the enemy of action and understanding. And I want to challenge you to think about the role of language in complexity. And so one thing I learned as a professor, when you go to teach somebody something, they tend to be learning the concepts first. They have to learn the language, the grammar, if you will, the rules of that new concept. And that's, you got to master that first, typically, before you can move on to higher order levels of learning, like applying that stuff to do things in the real world. And not only is complexity the enemy of action and understanding, if we don't truly understand that complex idea that we're trying to work with others to solve or to extend in a certain direction, we end up adding more problems to that system rather than adding solutions to that system because now we, we take our psychology and the individual differences that we have and we've added that as a layer on top of whatever it is that we're actually trying to produce and do as a team. So uh, just a simple thing is make sure, take pump the brakes to make sure people are truly aligned and the simplest way to do that is to have people explain things back to you in their own words. If people can't paraphrase things back, they don't understand them. And I, I learned that really quickly as a professor, and I've taken that into my coaching and mediation aspects of my business. When people can paraphrase back, they get it. When they can't paraphrase back, they either don't get it or they weren't listening or a combination of both. What students get caught in doing is wanting to sound smart rather than be smart to use that complex jargon that they probably don't really understand and they actually end up not communicating and not collaborating effectively with teammates when they're working in group settings. And that's because they're talking completely past each other. And this is not just a student phenomenon. I've seen it time and time again in my clients where people from different departments have different rules, procedures, standard operating practices, and they have different jargon. They have different acronyms and they don't slow down to explain things. And unfortunately, the way human psychology works, no one wants to put their hand up or rarely and say, hey, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Please slow down and explain this. In the quote unquote real world, people are not evaluated and rewarded based on what they know. They're evaluated and rewarded based on what they do with what they know. Now, I, before you throw out the objection, I realize to get into certain industries or jobs, you do have to have a base knowledge or a, a discipline that you connect to and can explain. But once you're in your job, there are no more tests based on solely what's in your head. Everything is about solving problems uh, on the fly oftentimes and with other people working on the fly. So you are rewarded and evaluated based on what you do with what you know, not just what you know. So the more complex you try to make things that you know, rather than share them in more simple ways, you're not helping the system that you're a part of. One of the most common questions I ask my students and I ask my clients, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. When you have a huge project or a big goal, you gotta break it into lots of mini goals and mini sprints. This is how the entire software industry operates and their operating practices are now infiltrating all other industries, whether we want them to or not, and how they organize themselves and how they break complex procedures and goals into mini goals and mini sprints is really useful. And that should be a metaphor that you should take with you 
you bite, you eat the elephant one bite at a time and you take a really complex or large project and break it down into a lot of simpler goals. Remember, language really does help create the reality that you're living in, in your personal life and your professional life. So think about the words that you're choosing and how complex are you making things? Are you doing so just to sound smart, for status, for reputation, uh, trying to impress someone? Or are you actually trying to communicate and share that message to achieve a personal team or organizational goal? And if so, what's the role of language and is everybody truly on the same page being able to move forward? So make sure you take this idea that complexity is the enemy of action and understanding and take it and put it into action in your life. Thanks a lot.